senhoras e meus senhores, muito boa tarde. Sejam bem-vindos à cerimónia de entrega do Bial Award in Biomedicine 2023. Quer às pessoas que aqui estão fisicamente, quer a quem está a assistir via streaming. To those who are following us via streaming. Now, the rector of the Nova University of Lisbon, Professor João Saagua, will now take the floor. Dear Minister of Health, Dr. Manuel Pizarro, dear Secretary of State for Higher Education, Professor Pedro Teixeira, dear members of the Parliament, namely Antonia Almeida Santos and Professor Alexandre Quintanilla, dear Excellence. Excellency, uh, Madam Ambassador of Germany, Julia Monar, dear President of the Council of Rectors of Portuguese Universities, Professor Paul Jorge Ferreira, dear Rector of the University of Lisbon, Professor Luís Ferreira, dear President of the Bial Foundation, Dr. Luís Portela, dear President of the Jury of the Bio Bial Award in Biomedicine, Professor Ralph Adolfs, from the Caltech Institute, and I also congratulate in his person all the distinguished members of the jury, dear members of the rectoral team and deans of the Nova schools, distinguished representatives of professional societies, namely the Medical Society, Psychologist Society, and Nutritionist Society, dear rep representatives of civil society present here and members of the academic community, ladies and gentlemen, let me start by welcoming, warmly welcoming you all to the Nova University of Lisbon. It is for us a great honor and pleasure to serve this year as the stage for the year's award ceremony of the prestigious Bial Award in Biomedicine. In fulfilling its mission of uh, serving society, we are that, we are the hosts, the Nova University are uh, the uh, uh, hosts, and in my brief words, I want to say why do we feel a bit more than just hosts, and this has to do with the importance we award to biomedicine and to the strategic partnership we have with Bial. In fulfilling its mission of serving society through knowledge in the most varied domains, the Nova University of Lisbon has over the last 50 years actively contributed to scientific progress in the field of health, whether through the many, many projects it coordinates or in which it participates, whether through the innovative technologies it develops with partners from industry and society, or through its intense scientific production, just as an example, more than 50% of scientific articles published by NOVA are in the field of SDG3, in the field of health and well-being. For us, the strategic importance of this field of health is such that it justified the creation of a multidisciplinary platform named NOMA Health, coordinated by a member of the directoral team. Uh, first, we had Pedro Pita Barros, then Jeff Fragata, and currently uh, Professor Claudio Soares, which has been operating as a hub for the production of ideas and projects in the field of health, and also bringing together uh, the strengths of NOVA and its partners, <coughs> among whom I would like to highlight today, of course, Bial. In particular, biomedicine is an extremely relevant field for NOVA, as we are, all know it is so important for society in general. The collaborative work developed in this field uh, brings together uh, uh, collaborative work between different fields of health covered at NOVA, such as medicine, biology, biomedical engineering, and technological areas such as AI, big data, uh, new materials, and robotics. This is why uh, we have 
invested significantly in increasing uh, our investment in this field, thus increasing our visibility and international reputation, thus uh, also attracting promising talent and renowned researchers, uh, also, but also for the innovative project projects with large uh, amounts of funding. A good example of this is the recent creation of the NOVA Institute for Medical Systems Biology, a new center of excellence that was awarded 30 million euros uh, of support by the European Union and the Portuguese government and the municipality of Oeiras in partnership with the Max Delbrunck Center of Molecular medicine in Berlin. This institute will bring an innovative vision to the study of various diseases with an emphasis on chronic cancer and cardiovascular diseases. This approach will combine molecule, molecular and omnics techniques at cellular level with bioinformatics using machine learning algorithms and AI to characterize the origins of these complex diseases. But uh, <coughs> We have students of NOVA develop many of its program at uh, uh, the labs of Bial, and for now I would like to uh, highlight the importance of Bial for us. So <coughs> the investments in the field of biomedicine has also allowed the university to establish close ties with the local community and with partners of excellence in the biomedical industry, of which our uh, uh, partners partnership with Bial is a strategic one. And here, once again, Bial, as I mentioned, has been a strategic, even a critical partner of NOVA. Uh, not only for the collaborative agenda, it has been developing with our NOVA Medical School, but also as a benefactor in our institutional development project to create a health campus in Kirkavellis centered on this school. It is obvious that the context of cutting edge activity, both scientific and industrial, in the biomedical field is one of extreme demand, demand, global international dimension and permanent pressure and scrutiny. In such a context, capturing and recognizing talent, both young and mature, are critical aspects. And so it is easy to understand the vision and importance underlying the BIAL Awards in biomedicine because they illuminate and reward the pioneering, pioneering talents of scientific discovery in a field that is critical for sustainable development, for health, and for common good. I would also like to thank His Excellency, the President of Portugal, for his high patronage of the, cer of the ceremony, making it even more special, and for his ongoing support for science and innovation in Portugal. And I extend my warmest congratulations to the Bayal Foundation and to all the supports of this initiative, and certainly to the awarded researchers. Thank you very much. We will now hear a recorded message from His Excellency, the President of Portugal, Professor Marcelo Rebelo de Souza. Dearest participants in this edition of the BIAL Awards, against my desire, I cannot be there with you person in person today. But here I am, through these digital means, sending you my testimony. First of all, I'd like to congratulate the Bial Foundation for its 30th anniversary, and I would like to highlight its remarkable trajectory. The fortunate partnership between Bial and the Council of Rectors of Portuguese Universities, acknowledging the importance of science and knowledge in people's lives, makes makes me be here today through these means expressing my deep gratitude and my profound regard for the work carried out by the Bial Foundation. Always devoted to promoting and disseminating research of excellence in the field of biomedicine over already three decades. And I've said it dozens of times, the foundation has not only exceeded ex expectations, it has also achieved international prestige and recognition, which makes our country so proud of. And I hope 
and Portugal hopes, and the Portuguese people hope that we continue to witness, year after year, this trajectory of success for which the foundation was established, while at the same time being a source of inspiration for many other foundations in an example that should be replicated. Today, it is the foundation's turn to recognize a work that eloquently translates a work of exceptional scientific quality. Thus, my second point is to congratulate the authors, namely in the person of Professor Thomas Kuhner. Your work, which is being awarded here today and which culminated in the publication in Nature magazine of an article on communication channels between neurons and glioma cells, is full of potential and it has all sorts of clinical implications. With this research, the way has been opened for therapeutic interventions, particularly in the field of oncological diseases of the central nervous system. It is really an occasion to highlight and to celebrate all the research, all the advances made over many years with so much perseverance and determination, an occasion to highlight solidarity that turns hope into tangible reality, both for society and for people. But I would also like to highlight the critical important joint work of countless institutions from different countries, crossing borders, joining forces to make research and the progress of science possible and therefore the advancement of society. Presently, the value of the work being done by scientists and researchers at international level is fortunately much better realized and much better understood by society as a determining factor for its evolution and which, which must be welcomed and promoted. We will certainly be faced with many more challenges in the future. And although we can't fully anticipate them, we do know one thing that knowledge, research and science will play an increasingly decisive role in the development of countries, in building fairer and better societies and more capable and better prepared citizens. By encouraging scientific research, this award offers a significant contribution in the desired direction. Thus, my wishes go in the same direction, that it may last and project itself in the future, that it may continue to inspire and, po and positively catalyze remarkable advancements in the field of innovation, thus promoting the well-being of all. And I would now like to end just as how I started, by thanking the Bial Foundation. I said last year that I would not forget its 30th anniversary. And I must tell you that as I knew that I couldn't be there with you today in person due to long-standing and unavoidable commitments, in any case, I decided that I would I want to hold a ceremony at the Palace of Belém to honor the Bial Foundation for its 30 years. And that is what has happened already. And it is now, it is how I wanted to honor it by awarding it the title of honorary member, honorary member of the Order of Merit. Because this is about real meritorious work for promoting knowledge, science and research for the sake of the future of us all. The president of the Bial Foundation, Dr. Luis Portela, will now take the floor.
dear Minister of Health, dear Secretary of State for Higher Education, also representing the Minister for Science, Technology and Higher Education. I would like to greet in a special way some former ministers and some former secretaries of state, dear rector of the Nova University of Lisbon, dear members of parliament, dear Madam Ambassador of Germany, dear President of the Council of Rectors of Portuguese Universities, dear uh, uh, deans of the Medical Society, of the Psychology Society, of the Nutrition Society, and of represent and representatives of other professional societies, dear Rector of the University of Lisbon, dear Chairman of COMPAT, dear Director General of Economic Activities, dear Chairman of the Foundation for Science and Technology, dear Chairman of the Portuguese Agency for Innovation, dear Chairman of Infarmed, and other representatives of public administration bodies, dear Presidents and other representatives of various Portuguese foundations, dear Presidents and other representatives of Portuguese business associations, dear colleagues from the pharmaceutical industry, dear members of the jury of the Bio Bial Award of in Myomedicine 2023, dear authorities present here, dear award winners, dear ladies and gentlemen. The Bial Foundation turns 30 this year, and the pharmaceutical company Bial is already 100 years old. I would like to congratulate all of the Bial employees present here today, and in particular, the chairman of the board of directors, Antonio Horta Osorio, and the chairman of the executive committee, Antonio Portela. I want to congratulate them for the long and fruitful life of the company, but also for taking on the task of pursuing the strong investment in research and development that the company has begun about 30 years ago as well as for their continued support to the Bial Foundation so that it can develop its sponsorship activities in the field of health sciences. The company founded my grand, by my grandfather, Alvar Portela, which I led for 42 years and which is presently managed, among others, by my sons, Antonio and Miguel, decided in the early 1980s to invest in the synthesis of innovative medicines. And at the same time, in 1984, it approached the Academy to create the Bayal Award for Clinical Medicine. In 1992, it set up its research and development department, then with only four persons uh, led by Professor André, our late Professor André. And presently, it has about 150 people conducting research there. Two years later, together with the Council of Rectors of Portuguese Universities, it set up the Bayal Foundation with the aim of, sponsorsing, of sponsoring scientific development in the field of health sciences, managing the already existing Bayal Award and inaugurating a system of grants to support scientific research in the field of psychophysiology and parapsychology. In 2009, Bial started to market the first Portuguese research drug, the anti-epileptic Zebinix, followed in 2016 by the anti-Parkinson disease drug Ongentis. With these two innovative medicines, the company went international. It is now present in more than 50 countries, and it has its own subsidiaries in 10 countries, particularly in all main European countries. More than 75% of its sales are made outside Portugal. Meanwhile, the foundation, managed by representatives of the Council of Rectors and by Bial, has distinguished many of Portugal's most outstanding researchers and has supported 865 research projects developed in universities in 30 countries by 1,702 researchers with grants. And more recently, the Bial Foundation has created two other awards, the Maria Souza Award, 
in partnership with the Portuguese Medical Society, which supports young researchers up to the age of 35, and the Bial Award in Biomedicine, which distinguishes the work published over the, 10, the last 10 years that has contributed the most to improving the health conditions of humanity. In the scholarship system, the selection of projects to be supported is made by our scientific council, made up of 58 scientists from around the world and chaired by neuroscientist Antonio Damasio. The awards are selected by independent juries. In the case of the Bile Award in Biomedicine, the jury is chaired by neuroscientist uh, Ralph Adolfs, and it includes two representatives from each of the following institutions, the European Research Council, the Council of Rectors of Portuguese Universities, the European Medical Association, the Scientific Board of the Bial Foundation, and also two previous winners of the Bial Award and two representatives from scientific journals, which this year are, were the British Medical Journal and the New England Journal of Medicine. We were able to assemble an absolutely remarkable jury of the highest quality. In the previous edition, this jury selected a paper from the team of Professor Ju Weissman and Professor Katalin Kariko, who were later awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology of medicine. This year, our jury once again carried out a careful selection process among the 70 seven zero scientific articles nomina nominated. Many thanks to all members of the jury and especially to its chairman, Professor Ralf Adolfs. Our congratulations also to the winning team, namely to Professor Thomas Kuhner, Professor Frank Winkler and Dr. Varun Venkataramani, all from the University of Heidelberg in Germany. Congratulations on your excellent work, and I wish you the best for the next, all the best for the next steps in the research you will certainly continue. This is a main high point in the celebration of Bial's 30th anniversary, which we want to emphasize further by announcing the new edition of the Bial Award in Biomedicine to be held in 2025. The regulation will be similar to those of this edition, and Professor Ralph Adolfs has honored us by agreeing to once again chair the jury. We will then invite the institutions involved to appoint their representatives. The 30th anniversary of the Bial Foundation will have yet two more important highlights. From April 3rd to 6th, we will hold in the 14th, we will hold the 14th edition of Beyond the Brain Symposium dedicated to creativity. Uh, and then on the 9th of October, a major conference will be held at the rectorship of the University of Lisbon, as well as the award, uh, Maria Souza, uh, the awarding of the uh, uh, Maria Souza Award. And you are all invited to this conference on October 9th at, seven, uh, at 5 p.m. I would also like to thank the Nova University, namely to its rector, Professor João Saagua, for providing us these beautiful facilities and for the warm friendship with which they have welcomed and hosted us all here. My, also, my deep gratitude also to the Council of Rectors of Portuguese Universities, represented here by its chairman, Professor Paulo Jorge Ferreira, and to the Portuguese Medical Society, represented here by its Chairman Carlos, Dr. Carlos Cortes for all the support they have provided to the Bial Foundation. And also like to thank all of those present here, namely Minister of Health, Mr. Dr. Manuel Pizarro, and the Secretary of State for Higher Education, Professor Pedro Teixeira. It was planned that the ceremony would be presided by the President of Portugal, Professor Marcel Rebelo Sousa. But unfortunately, last Thursday, he said that unfortunately he was not able to attend. However, as we have heard in the message, he was kind enough to have sent us, the President asked the Board of Directors of Bial Foundation to be at the Palace of Belém earlier this afternoon, where he distinguished us with the insignia of honorary member of the Order of Merit, a decoration he decided to award to the Bial Foundation. I am very sorry that the President is not here now to publicly thank him for his generosity.
But in any way, in any case, I would like to express our deep gratitude for the distinction with, with which he has honored us, as well as for all the support he has always given to the Bial Foundation. And this distinction is a great encouragement to this foundation to keep pursuing its work, doing always more and more and always better and better to support the scientific research that is conducted in the field of health to contribute to people having more and better knowledge, more and better health, more and better lives. Once again, congratulations to the winners and thank you all for your kind attention. We will now listen to the chairman of the jury of, Bio, of the Bile Award in Biomedicine, Professor Ralph Adolfs, who will now take the floor. Dear Minister of Health, dear Secretary of State for Higher Education, Dear Rector of this University, President of the BL Foundation and members of the Board of the BL Foundation, distinguished guests, awardees, ladies and gentlemen, um, I'm very happy to uh, celebrate with you here today the third BL Award in Biomedicine. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about how we got here and some of the background. And I would like to begin by uh, acknowledging uh, the BL Foundation's 30th anniversary today, as you just heard about from Dr. Portella. Uh, this is a tremendous achievement, and it depends, as you also just heard, on the four mechanisms for funding in basic research and clinical research that the BL Foundation has. It's research grants, hundreds of them that have funded work in Portugal and all over the world, and three distinguished awards the Clinical Medicine Award, the Maria de Souza Award, and the one that we are celebrating here today, the BL Award in Biomedicine, which alternates in years with the Clinical Medicine Award. That is a tremendous portfolio for any foundation, and it depends on individuals, on people. And so I would like first to offer my very deep gratitude to the person who has made all of this possible, without whom we would not be here today, and that is the president of the BL Foundation, Dr. Luis Portela. Thank you very much for your faith in basic research and in clinical medicine. And I would also personally like to thank three members of the staff of the BL Foundation that have been instrumental in the work of the jury throughout and indeed help in organizing this very meeting as well. Um, Helena Gama, and uh, Paula Gedesh, in particular, who has been with the BL Foundation forever, and also Sandra Pinto. Thank you very much for all of your work. And for myself, it has been a pleasure working with the BL Foundation in good part because of the passion and the dedication of these four people whose names I just mentioned. So how did we get here? This is the third installment of the BL Award, and it is worth briefly remembering the first two. The BL Award in Biomedicine began in 2019, Back then, I was not president of the jury, but Fernando Lopez da Silva was. Fernando Lopez da Silva passed away tragically, short after this prize in 2019, but he was an esteemed neuroscientist who worked on a topic about the brain that is in fact very relevant to today's winning paper. He looked at the question of how cells in the brain communicate with one another through electrical activity, how this gives rise to large-scale brain activity and waves that you can measure with scalp EEG. That particular prize in 2019 was won by a large research team led by Caetano Reis y Souza for a paper on cancer. It was melanoma, not brain cancer, but you can see already at its inception, the BL Award had the two themes of neuroscience and of cancer. And so I feel we are coming full circle to some extent with the award today, which is indeed on cancer neuroscience. The 2021 BL Award, as you just heard about, was won by a team led by Drew Weissman and colleagues, and this was a phenomenal piece also that uh, engineered a new technology for vaccines using messenger RNA. That particular paper focused on Zika virus disease, but subsequently this mRNA vaccine technology was in fact used 
to fight the COVID pandemic. And the impact was enormous, so much so that Drew Weissman and colleagues shortly after winning the Bial Award in biomedicine also won the Nobel Prize in medicine. And now we are here for the third Bial Award in biomedicine. And let me tell you briefly how we got here. We began with 70 nominations of papers. And this is a very important step that I would like to emphasize to everybody in the audience and those of you who may be listening on the internet because if we do not get a nomination for a paper in the first place, we are unable to consider it further. So it is very important, and I would urge all of you to please brainstorm and decide what the very best paper might be from the past decade for the next Bial Award in 2025. You have about a year and a half to send us your nominations, which need to come from scientific societies or universities in the first instance. So we had 70 nominations, and we, the jury, 12 people from six different uh, institutions that you heard about uh, read these papers, we deliberated, we had meetings on Zoom, and then in November we met in person for two days in Porto, and we argued vigorously and we tried to find the one paper that was the very best paper in biomedical research from the past decade. This was no easy task, as you can imagine, uh, for two reasons. One is that there were many outstanding papers and we had to find the one that was truly the best. But a second reason that it was difficult was because we, the jury, had to step back and reflect on what criteria to use to evaluate the award. And we discovered the criteria, and they're very important, and we think that they embody the mission of the Bial Foundation, they embody what the Bial Award is about, and they comply with our own feelings about what really matters about biomedical research. And those criteria are evident already in the compound noun, biomedicine. Bio for basic research, understanding biology, understanding life, understanding the body and its cells and how this works, and medicine for clinical research, understanding how to cure disease and help suffering. So when we looked at the winning paper, we realized immediately that it was of outstanding importance for clinical relevance. This was a paper on glioblastoma, which is a devastating brain disease. It's a type of cancer that has no cure, if you have this disease, you are very likely to die in the next few years. So clinical significance was outstanding. There was also broader biological significance in the research that is very important to point out. It seems likely that in the future, many types of cancer all over your body, not just glioblastoma in the, in the brain, in the central nervous system, will in fact feature close interaction between the tumor and the nervous system the enteric or the peripheral nervous system elsewhere in your body. So this is a fundamental theme that we all know about. The body and the brain are intimately connected and have to work together all the time. Part of my nervous system is in my fingers and my toes so I can move them, I can feel things. And this, project, this process is hijacked when you have cancer and cancer cells all over your body have components of the nervous system that helps them, may help them to grow. So basic clinical importance, broad relevance to cancer biology, but in addition, a third component that we saw in the paper, in the winning paper when we read it, was that it was simply beautiful. It told a story of discovery, beginning with the scientists looking just structurally under a microscope and finding that healthy brain cells made contacts with cancer cells. They then followed the structural finding up with functional characterization, one of the main findings of the paper, showing that in fact these contacts, called synapses, are functional. The brain cells are putting out molecules, neurotransmitter glutamine, and this allows the cancer cells to receive that signal, and in turn, they generate electrical activity, calcium levels change, and the cancer cells are able to proliferate and to infiltrate the brain tissue. So the healthy brain is actually helping the bad cancer cells to grow and proliferate in their malignant mission. So the winning paper had all of these components, and I want to congratulate the three authors. Faroon Venkataramani is the first author. The way these papers are often written is there's a long list of authors, and there are 29 from four countries for this paper. The first author often does most of the hard work, most of the experiments, and most of the data analysis and visualization, writes a draft of the paper, Together with the senior authors, which are Frank Winkler and Thomas Kuhner, all three of them are from the University of Heidelberg in Germany. And I want to congratulate you all on a phenomenal piece of work on a paper that exemplifies the very best in both basic research and clinical relevance. Congratulations to you.
Vamos agora conhecer a investigação que esteve na base do artigo premiado os professores Thomas Kuna, Frank Winkler e o Dr. Varun Venkatramani, três dos autores do artigo, contam como tudo começou. So we recently made a fundamentally new discovery. So far, people thought that neurons communicate only with other neurons or with muscles. Uh, however, what we now found is that neurons can also communicate with cancer cells by using traditional bona fide synapses. We are interested how the nervous system can interact with cancer in general, especially in brain tumors, but also outside of the brain. Cancer actually is really driven by neural features. So cancer hijacks very important um, aspects of our nervous system. And in the end, this makes many cancers grow, invade, disseminate, and resist therapies. And this is crucial, of course, um, to better understand these cancers. We found out that these tumor cells really show a vivid intercellular communication pattern. So our interest was, what is the code of this communication? So by work over the years, I think we are now near to crack this code of communication. Thomas Kuna, Varun Venkatramani and me, we started collaborating for our 2015 discovery paper of these neural-like cancer cell networks in brain tumors. We first looked into ultrastructure of tumor microtubes. We wanted to actually understand how are the tumor cells look like. One day the door opens and Varun enters the office quite excited and uh, showed uh, some electron micro micrograph to me and said, is that a synapse? Uh, and I said, yeah, sure, I mean, that's the synapse, absolutely. And so that was sort of the first documented neuron to tumor uh, synapse that uh, mankind has seen. I do remember it, how I was very surprised and was very unexpected. So we were not looking at this phenomenon at all. It shows that we always have to keep an open mind also in science to be open to these kinds of discoveries. One of the big challenges of studying these tiny synapses is that you need quite sophisticated technology. We have uh, established here uh, a number of also new technologies. For example, what we are using a lot is electron microscopy, and so we devised a new strategy where we can cut thousands of sections and collect them and then do three-dimensional reconstructions with nanometer resolution. We've been using advanced imaging technologies that allow us to really see how information is transmitted in real time. And also we've been using um, an investigation called two-photo microscopy to really understand how living tumor cells in the brain behave. But the research environment in Heidelberg is, I think, quite unique in a sense that our campus is very compact. I can walk to pretty much every laboratory here within five minutes. And also we have a very collaborative spirit. I am caring on a daily basis brain tumors, and after the diagnosis, many questions come to the mind of patients. Now, why me? Can I influence these uh, diseases somehow? Can I even influence these cancers by certain cognitive strategies or thinking? In the past, I often have said, well, maybe, I don't know. Now, I must say, um, yes, that's very possible. So our work is a milestone because it is a completely novel mechanism how synapses are hijacked by brain tumors. It really enhances our understanding of brain tumors. And uh, I think this is a field that is just at the beginning. I'm pretty sure we will find many new types of interactions and we'll also find ways of interfering with these interactions. Uh, so that I do think that this is a real game changer. In Germany, we have now started a clinical trial where we test a specific inhibitor of these neural cancer synapses that we discovered to show whether we can find any meaningful effects in recurrent glioblastoma 
and uh, we are really looking very much forward to the results of this trial. Passamos agora. Passamos então agora ao momento mais aguardado desta cerimónia, em que vamos. We now move to the most eagerly awaited moment of the ceremony, as we will now hand out the diplomas to the three authors of the winning paper. Glutamatergic synaptic in input to glioma cells drives brain tumor progression published in the September 2019th issue of the magazine Nature. Now I ask the president of the Council of Rectors of Portuguese Universities, Professor Paulo Ferreira, accompanied by the president of the Real Foundation, Dr. Luis Porello, to present a diploma to Dr. Varun Venkataramani, whom we now call to the stage. Now, the Secretary of State for Higher Education, Professor Pedro Teixeira, will present a diploma to Professor Frank Winkler, whom we also now call to the stage. Finally, we ask the Minister of Health, Dr. Manuel Pizarro, to, accompanied by the President of the Bial Foundation, hand over the diploma to Professor Thomas Kuhner, whom we now call to the stage. And now, the work distinguished by the Bayal Award in Biomedicine 2023 will now be presented by its authors, Professor Thomas Kuhner, Dr. Varun Venkataramani, and Professor Frank Winkler. Dear Minister Dr. Pizal, uh, dear Secretary of State Professor Teixeira, uh, dear Rector, Professor Sahagwa, dear Ambassador, Dr. Monal, uh, dear President of the Council of Rectors, uh, Professor Ferreira, uh, dear Chairman of the Bayal Foundation, Dr. Portela, and uh, dear President of the Jury, Professor Adolfs, and uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, um, it is a great honor to receive the prestigious Bial uh, Award in Biomedicine. In the name of all authors of the awarded work, I extend my heartfelt gratitude uh, to the Bial Foundation and uh, the Selection Committee for recognizing the significance of our research. The achievement is a testament to the dedication, creativity, collaboration, and uh, commitment of all uh, people involved in this work. I would like to also extend special thanks to our highly skilled technicians and technical staff without which uh, this work would have been impossible. 
Our study deals with glioblastoma, a horrific disease. Glioma uh, is the most frequent malignant primary brain tumor. It has a frightening survival rate of uh, less than 5% uh, in five years. Um, it, has a, uh, it is not curable. And uh, glioblastoma infiltrates the brain, is highly therapy resistant, and can be considered a whole brain disease. And uh, as you can see here in this uh, section of a human brain, which contains this primary tumor, and many satellites, all these dots that you can see that are all over the place already, but they are still not detectable. So our work has led to an unexpected discovery that changed the way we think about this disease. In retrospect, I often wonder, you know, how did we pull this off? So, you know, to go from a basic discovery all the way through all these different levels to devising a new treatment strategy. And um, I came up with three possibilities and three ingredients you need to carry out this type of work. Um, one is chance, opportunity, and people. Second is diversity of model systems. And the third is power of technology. So it all started in the courtyard of the elementary school where Professor Winkler and I often met when picking up our kids. And of course, scientists talk science whenever they have a chance to. Uh, so we started talking and we soon realized that we actually have very highly complementary expertise um, as illustrated here by these word clouds. Uh, but we also had a clear common interest. So having access to an excellent research environment, we could uh, set things into motion rather quickly. Uh, while all of this is certainly very important, uh, I think the most important ingredient actually are people. And uh, here I would like to um, <clears throat> particularly emphasize the role and contributions of Dr. Venkaramani. He was not only at the forefront of doing experiments, but also made crucial conceptual contributions and co-supervised students. I would also like to emphasize that authors two to five were all medical students performing their thesis work as part of the story. We were also very lucky to have so many collaborators that made crucial contributions towards the success of our project. So second point was diversity of model systems. As you can see here, we used three different levels of models. Co-cultures, a very reduced system of reduced complexity, um, perfect to study basic mechanisms. We used mouse models to uh, have access to a complexity of the living organism. Uh, we implant, for example, labeled tumor cells. Um, and uh, these tumor cells would then form a tumor that would reca recapitulate um, the human disease. And lastly, we used patient material uh, offering the full complexity of human disease. So these different levels of observation can be related to each other and allow forward as well as backward translation so we can link all these different levels to each other. Now, the next point is power of technology. So this slide is designed to simply point out the wide range of technologies that we are using. I don't expect anybody here to, in the audience to have an idea about what these are all about. Um, but let me nevertheless give you two examples of two techniques that were particularly important for this work. So the first example is about three-dimensional electron microscopy. So imagine this cube here being this whole auditorium. Then basically your head will be this little green dot here, the cell, and the tip of your pinky will be a synapse. So these are the size relations that we're dealing with here. And our correlative um, 3D EM approach allows us to specifically find cells um, basically like the literal needle in the haystack. So we achieved this by cutting thousands of sections and registering them to the fluorescence uh, image, to this one here. So, 
And uh, we can then image high resolution outer structure of synapses. What you can see, for example, here, all these little things with the many dots are synapses. Another example is uh, intravital multiphoton microscopy. Uh, by implanting a, a glass window into the skull of a mouse, we can directly look into the brain uh, and see labeled tumor cells and blood vessels. This allows us to visualize disease processes on the level of cells and even intercellular signaling. Now here you see a time-lapse movie covering several weeks of time showing how tumor cells invade the brain. And I think if you look at this, this is really scary, right? Um, this migration and colonization of the brain is a hallmark of this disease. And with this, I want to pass over uh, to uh, Dr. Venka Damarani, who will tell you now more about what we actually did discover. Thank you, Thomas. Um, it is my incredible honor to speak here today and to take you in the next few minutes through what we've discovered and how we were able to come from these very unexpected findings of synapses between nerves, cells, neurons, and tumor cells to developing novel therapeutic concepts uh, that we are currently testing in clinical trials. So where did we start? As we already mentioned, as was mentioned several times, we started not necessarily by look, wanting to look at the interaction between nervous system and tumor cells, but we really wanted to look at the ultrastructure of these tumor cells, and basically all these synapses in the brain were simply a distraction for us. But when we really looked into the ultrastructure and looked at the interface, um, what we were not able to um, avoid were this uh, finding of these synapses on these models, in these, both in these model systems of the mouse, but also in resected material of human patients. So showing us that this is not simply an artifact, but it's really occurring in the human disease. But we didn't really know um, whether this type of um, communication is simply a structural aberration that potentially happens in cancer, or there were the really synaptic um, synapses, so basically the mechanism of how information is passed along in our brain um, is also hijacked on a functional level. And with, for this purpose, we made use of a technique called patch clamp electrophysiology that allows us really to listen to how neurons and tumor cells can talk with each other. And what we really did here in these tumor cells is that they receive information from neurons. Again, starting here from um, patient material, but also we see, could see this in all other systems. But we never saw this the other way around. So it was always in unidirectional communication, always um, the tumor cells being on the receiving end and the neurons sending the signals to the tumor cells. But we really didn't understand, so do these tumor cells also have the machinery to make something biologically meaningful out of this signal? And for this purpose, we wanted to visualize um, calcium transients, so basically universal mechanism how um, tr electrical signals can get translated into a biologically meaningful signal. And we again looked in the living mouse at the tumor cells and looked at the baseline conditions, how these tumor cells are firing. And you see already the tumor cells having showing some of these calcium transients. But when, as soon as the screen goes dark, we strongly stimulate the neurons. And you see that the um, calcium transients significantly increase upon stimulation, activating this whole tumor network. So we knew there is really something biologically meaningful after neuronal stimulation that we can see in these tumor cells. But we still didn't understand what does it now mean for, this, um, for the hallmarks of this disease, for the invasion of the whole brain colonization. And for this purpose, we again um, were able to um, make use of this um, stimulation paradigm and looked at cells, at tumor cells that were clearly responding to neuronal activity and those that were not responding to neuronal activity. And what we could see is that those that respond clearly to neuronal activity are also the ones that drive the invasion into the brain. And again, how could we inhibit this? Again, we made use here um, of a paradigm using general anesthesia. So basically, trying to inhibit neuronal activity altogether in the cortex. 
so in the, in the specialized brain of the um, area of the brain. And what we could see is that we could indeed, by inhibiting neuronal activity, could also inhibit the invasion and colonization of the brain. But obviously, this is not um, a feasible treatment strategy to put patients over time under anesthesia. So we needed a more specific mechanism. And um, what we were able to use is a drug called parimpanel. It's an anti-epileptic drug that we often use for drug-resistant epilepsy and gave it to these tumor-bearing mice and followed regions over time. Um, with this in vivo microscopy approach. And what we could see is that the tumor under normal condition normally grows, but we could really inhibit the growth. So basically the tumor stays stable after giving this drug. So basically um, hindering total brain colonization after giving this drug. So taken together, what we saw is a unidirectional communication route. So the nerves always being the center of the signal going to the tumor cells that really is able now to make sense out of this neuronal input in the form of electrical signals, calcium transients, and which again leads to the invasion and proliferation of the disease. And what we will hear now more about is how we could further develop this, um, these um, f um, strategies into therapies and what it also means for other types of cancer by uh, Professor Frank Winkler. Yeah, these discoveries of these neural cancer synapses, these malignant synapses in glioblastoma, in glioma, is already exciting enough. But of course, the next question is, is that merely a shadow of the cell of origin, which is also neural in these brain tumors? Or is this a more yeah, generalizable concept in cancer that these malignant synapses can drive cancers? So the next step we again jointly uh, took together was looking into these synapses in brain metastasis. Brain metastasis is a devastating complication of many cancers, even much more frequent than glioblastoma, is similar bad prognosis. And what we found is that indeed, in breast cancer, in melanoma brain metastasis, these cancer cells shown here um, around their typical blood vessel position here in green, the cancer cell, they also show malignant synapses. Again, the cancer cell on the receiving side, neurons on the presynaptic side. Um, again, amperoceptors, so stimulatory, excitatory synapses, and these synapses support the cancer cells to, support, uh, to survive in the brain and also to grow in the brain, and they are electrically active and functional. And this is really the first proof now, and this is not published, but pre-published already, that bona fide synapses can form between neurons and no, even non-neural cells. So fascinating questions arise. Is this a widespread phenomenon? Are these neuron cancer synapses found in most or many cancers in and even outside the brain? And can we come to more general anti-cancer therapies, because again, with parimpanel, this approved anti-epileptic drug, which is an amperoceptor inhibitor, could really reduce brain metastatic burden in these animals again. So, and this, of course, goes to a far more general question. Um, and discoveries of the last 10 to 20 years really show that neural input to cancer in brain cancer, but also to most other cancer entities outside the brain, can drive tumor initiation, tumor growth, spread of tumors, and resistance of tumors. And these neural cancer synapses are certainly one very important uh, mechanism of how that works. And we have shown this, and now others have shown it for primary brain tumors, like the group of Michel Monji. There are also other mechanisms, like, like more, let's say, molecules that are passed over without synapses on a systemic level involving hormones. But uh, also, and this is also something uh, where we actually started our journey from, that cancer cells themselves can really display certain neuronal or neural features to thrive. And indeed, um, this is um, what Thomas Kuhner already mentioned, uh, this 2015 paper where we, where we discovered that in brain tumors, tumor cells extend these very long neuronal-like processes to interconnect to a communicating, resilient network. This 
Tumor cells are integrated, they, they communicate with each other, they can detect damage, they repair the tumor um, by this communication. So a very almost intelligent behavior in these tumors. And this is, this is of course, uh, something, um, this discovery brought us then to the discovery of these neurocancer synapses. And these networks, as we know now, as shown by Baron Ben Kataramani, they, um, they are stimulated by these neuron glioma synapses that uh, Baron just um, described to you, but also to pacemaker-like tumor cells. So tumor cells sitting in the hubs of these tumor cell networks and generating a constant beat like a pacemaker, like a little heart, activating these tumor networks. And this is indeed also reflecting a certain mechanisms that certain neurons display during neurodevelopment. So again, cancer hijacking very important neuronal features. And the more we learn about that, the more we learn about cancer and how to better treat these cancers. Um, so a lot of new therapeutic strategies emerged from these insights, indeed, um, as, as mentioned many uh, times. And it's really amazing also for, for, a, for a neuroscientist and for a clinician like me to see how well this can go. So targeting these neuroglioma synapses, or if you like, more generally, these neurocancer networks, um, is a very interesting idea how to better treat these tumors by drug repurposing, by using this more than 100 approved drugs in neurology and psychiatry now to target cancers, yeah? like uh, the, the um, yeah, um, um, CBNX that was just mentioned, yeah, developed by the BL Foundation, um, but also other antiepileptics and other, um, other drugs that interact with uh, neural signaling mechanisms that are all approved in the clinic, but also for drug development. So, um, since one anti-epileptic drug was, um, which, yeah, yeah, I hope it, oh, it just stopped, yeah, here we go. Um, one approved anti-epileptic drug is perempanol. This is a very effective anti-epileptic drug to treat um, yeah, ep um, brain tumor-related epilepsy in patients. It's something that I like to give to my patients that suffer from epilepsy that does not respond well to other um, anti-epileptic drugs. Um, but however, it does not only inhibit this neuronal um, yeah, high excitability, which is epilepsy, but can also directly inhibit these malignant synapses between neurons and cancers. So really drug repurposing as one um, interesting avenue here. And now we have started a clinical trial in Germany funded by the um, German Ministry of um, Research um, where we um, apply perempanol in recurrent glioblastoma versus placebo um, in, a, in a phase two design and um, want to uh, then detect first effects in re-resected tumor material, but also in AI-guided MRI analysis over these eight weeks to um, yeah, demonstrate that these discoveries at some point can be really um, meaningful and important for patients we await. So as I speak now, we are including the first patients in this uh, multi-institutional trial in Germany. And we expect the first results in about two years from now. So hopefully, hopefully they will be positive, of course. So now to conclude um, what the three of us um, have, have told you today is these unexpected synaptic connections or these non-canonical synapses, if you like, they exist and can stimulate cancer progression. So we are just starting to explore the world of neurocancer interactions and we are jointly now and also others worldwide are working to establish a new pillar of cancer therapy based on these discoveries. discoveries um, clearly, and this is um, um, a point that the, uh, His Excellence, the President, uh, pointed out and Thomas Kuna also pointed out, collaboration is key in science. That's true for all science, but it's particularly important for cancer neuroscience, you know, where um, neuroscientists and cancer researchers need to find a way uh, and collaborate where um, basic scientists and clinicians need to find a way to come together and collaborate. And so uh, with these kind of close multidisciplinary interactions, we expect a lot of uh, great progress. And for us, the three of us, um, the Bial Award in Biomedicine is a great stimulus to follow this path. Thank you. Vai agora usar da palavra o Sr. Ministro da Saúde, Dr. Manuel Pizarro.
Senhor Presidente do Conselho de Reitores das Universidades Portuguesas, Professor Paulo Jorge Freire, Senhor Reitor da Universidade Nova de Lisboa e nosso anfitrião hoje, Professor João Ságuá, Senhor Presidente da Fundação Bial, Doutor Luís Portela, Senhoras e Senhores Deputados, Senhor Deputado Alexandre Quintanilha, Senhor Deputada Maria António Almeida Santos, Senhores antigos membros dos governos, permitam-me que saúde em especial, naturalmente, o Senhor Ministro da Saúde, Professor Correia de Campos, Senhor Embaixadora da Alemanha, Caros eh, Sr. Presidente do Júri, e em si saúdo todos os membros do Júri deste importante Prémio Bial em Biomedicina, Professor Ralf Adolf, caros investigadores premiados, aqui representados por Thomas Kühner, Frank Winkler, e agora é que é difícil, Varun Venkataramani, espero que seja reconhecível. Authors, uh, Dr. Thomas Kuhner, Dr. Varun Venkataramani, dear Professor Frank Winkler, welcome to our country. I feel very, very honored to be here with all of you celebrating science and innovation. So I want to greet you in a very special way the path, the outstanding path uh, followed by the company Bial and the Bial Foundation, which is highly inspiring for our country and for Europe and for the world as well as our presence here in this room uh, is a proof of uh, Professor uh, Kuhner. <coughs> the uh, announcement of this award was not a spam uh, from uh, an email spam, it was uh, actually a reality. And what we s just saw, a simple explanation of things that we know are highly complex. This is a, a huge motivation for us to acknowledge the central importance the critical importance of research, knowledge, and science in the progress of humanity. <coughs> it uh, allowed us to come to the point uh, where we are at, at present, but as someone said, uh, each discovery that we make brings up new problems, new issues, and inspires us uh, to uh, uh, take up an attitude before the world and biology that must make us want to keep progressing uh, in an unstoppable way. So here we are promoting science and science as a source of uh, progress of humanity. And we are here, here acknowledging that science also helps our society to make progress. And when we speak about the merits of science, and this was highlighted several times today, we are speaking about something that in involves acknowledgement of individuals, uh, the, 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 the achievements of individuals, but that goes beyond the achievements of individuals, because what we do in our days in terms of science uh, requires sharing, sharing of uh, knowledge, sharing, sharing of research. So collaboration is, collaboration among peers is uh, the new dimension of science. And this award, uh, by the Bell Foundation uh, highlights not only uh, the uh, distinction that is being made, but a huge investment in thousands of scientific careers, uh, hundreds of thousands of discoveries that each one of them contributes in its own way, in its own way, to the progress we are uh, all uh, seeing. And also, it's a recognition of the determination and persistence of those that are dedicated to research, as it, at the same time it celebrates the uh, fundamental work done by researchers. In the field of health, cancer is one of our greatest challenges. The rate of success, successful treatments has increased significantly over the last few years, but the fact is that cancer diseases, oncological diseases, keep representing one of the main causes of mortality and the uh, 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 main cause of many years of uh, poor life. Despite all our efforts, uh, the incidence of cancer has been increasing. The prevalence of uh, cancer has been increasing, uh, also following the uh, progress we have been uh, seeing in our longevity. And also because there are certain types of behavior, avoidable behaviors that should be, uh, that are 
are difficult to uh, uh, overcome. Every second, uh, 39 cases of cancer are uh, diagnosed every year. And if we cannot change this trend, uh, 20, uh, the, the incidence of the prevalence of cancer will increase by 25 percent uh, by 2030, and it will become the main cause of death in Europe by 2030. So we all have an important role to play in this disease. First of all, by taking up healthier lifestyles and also by disco discovering uh, new ways of uh, uh, diagnosing at an earlier stage these diseases and treating them. The role of science is and will remain as critical in this field, namely by uh, the, 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 the role of biomedicine. We need to understand better cancer and its development and uh, from that point of view that uh, the, the work that was awarded today here is highly inspiring and outstanding. And I would also like to highlight the capacity the jury presided by Professor Ralph Hadolfs had to uh, 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 award uh, this, this, this work uh, among uh, so many uh, remarkable uh, uh, awards uh, because uh, you were able to understand how this work can actually be translated into the treatment of uh, patients. Professor Venkataraman, this can be may, maybe an accidental discovery, but it's a very fortunate discovery, and such discovery uh, implied hard work for it to come about in such a, a, a way. Uh, so uh, there couldn't be a better award like this one to help save lives and improve the quality of lives of people. The, expectation of managing uh, patients, and we are all potential patients, is very complex but very important. Uh, the sign, the science gives us of uh, having hope about the future, of having uh, hope, uh, and uh, uh, that is very significant. Uh, because this is a hope that gives the possibility of human intervention in controlling such a dramatic disease such as cancer on glioblastoma, one, one of the most aggressive cancers that we see in our day to day. So we feel hopeful, so we feel optimistic uh, with such a, uh, an award. So I would like to end off uh, by uh, stressing the values, the values that over its path over 30 years of the Bial Foundation, but before that, 100 years of the Bial Company. And I would also like to uh, compliment uh, the chairman of the executive board, the uh, chairman of the board, uh, Orto Osorio, for the role they have played in combining investment in science, uh, research, and development with the promotion of the economy, uh, which is also our sustainability, part of our sustainability as a society and our sustainability of uh, agents that promote research and that promote a, an ideal of solidarity, uh, of, of solidary access to uh, health uh, uh, and to the dem democratization of health, uh, such as what was brought to us by the uh, revolution of the 25th of April, uh, 1974, that we are celebrating its 50, 50th anniversary this year. So, uh, Dr. Luis Portel, I think uh, everyone uh, joins me in thanking you for your remarkable individual path before these two institutions and now in a consolidated, consolidated trend, uh, uh, transition uh, by having your sons ahead of the company. And I want to thank you for your role as a promoter of science, research, and development in Portugal. Thank you all very, very much, and congratulations. Well done. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your presence uh, here, 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 either here in person or uh, via streaming uh, for this uh, award, uh, Bial Award in Biomedicine 2023. I would like to wish you a very uh, happy uh, evening, a very pleasant evening, and rest of the week.